ball in his sights again. It was a beautiful run. Nope, this is not a boat. But I want to do a demonstration on this helicopter pitch gauge, digital pitch gauge, and why I'm using it to blueprint my sponsons. I have the motor wires unplugged for safety. This is my Goblin 570 running on 12S. I have all top of the line high end um, electronics in it. So these are Sabok servos. I believe they're like 440 inch ounces, real high speed, digital, very accurate. We use the pitch gauge to set up the throws on the blades. So on this one, I'm looking for 14 degrees positive and negative. And I'll show you on the transmitter how sensitive this pitch gauge is. So let's go to the monitor screen. And we're looking at this one right here, the pitch. I'm going to move the throttle collective stick right here. Bring this pitch number back to zero. And it's sensitive. See the number up here on the pitch. So I'm trying to get it back to zero. There's positive one. There's zero. We got zero on the pitch gauge. If we go into the menu here under servo setup. Right here, and if I adjust this number, you can watch that pitch move, the angle. So it's at 107. And that two clicks moves two, three tenths of a degree. Right back to where it was. So very accurate servos. Very accurate instrument. Now back to the G30 and why I showed you that. When I show an angle, like this should be around 17, I sanded this and you can see it's got a little bit of twist I'm taking out, but right in here, it's not touching my sanding block. So if I Put it here, it's down under 16 degrees. So I'm blueprinting this area here. And I'll get differences in the reading just from slightly rocking this. So I started on this side. I have, and what I'm doing is I'm just sanding this flat to both edges. So in my other video, I was getting 17 degrees all the way up to where the inside plywood drops off. Now, just sanding it to the edges, I'm getting, get back to my reference, zero, I'm getting 16 and a half degrees. If I go over here to this one, it's still at 17. So, if you just sanded these Follow the plywood, sand them flat, edge to edge. There's no way you would be able to tell without this. So I want to, from this point here, all the way forward, I want to get the same angle as it changes all the way up to the tips for a specific reason. I'm going to be blueprinting how it handles when you let off the throttle, it settles in a turn. In other words, settles into a right or a left turn. Zip kit says, keep these edges sharp. So that's kind of like your, like a fin, turn fin, the inside edge. But now the outside edge, 
It's like a non-trip surface. If you watch the video of an F1 tunnel haul, there's times when it drops into the turn. This inside edge, it's dropped all the way down to where it's up past the front of the fuselage in the water, which means we're engaging this angle on the outside, making a turn, let's say to the left, all the way up into here. Here's a video showing the F1 tunnel hall, slow motion, letting off the throttle, settling into a turn, making a turn, and then getting back up on the ride pads. This is very interesting to watch an F1 tunnel hall in action on a turn. If you watch closely, it makes a slight turn to the outside, tips onto the inside sponson, grabs some more edge, and right here, almost buried to the tip, and then back up on the ride pads. Perfect execution of a turn with an F1 outboard tunnel haul. So I know this is a deep dive. It's not for everyone, that's fine. But whenever I'm doing a build, any part of it, whether it's blueprinting, sponsons, building straight and square, setup, uh, sharpening, balancing props, I like taking a deep dive. So these ride pads, this area right here, what I have marked right here, is done as far as sanding. Can't go any deeper. I have the angles. I've been checking three places. The beginning, the middle, and the end. And I got 17 degrees. You look at areas like right here. That is close. And that will be taken up with epoxy. Now I am focusing from here forward. Now that I've sanded it flat, I had 17 here to here. So now I have closer to 16 and a half. This is still at 17 degrees, which means I got to take more off the inside. And then I'll check it here and check it here compared to this side. Initially, I'm sanding the X pattern and holding pressure on the inside edge. I need to reduce this side by half a degree from here up into here. The rest of this looks the same as this side. Then I'm taking a block so I don't get waves through here because I'm pushing in certain areas and I'm going lengthwise to level out and average that angle that I've slightly changed. So let's check that again. Seventeen to here, it's the end of the ride pad area. This side I'm getting 16 and a half, 16, 4, 16, 5. 
Hold it down flat. Nice, 16.5. Got 16 in here. Fourteen and a half. Fourteen and a half. Been getting eight and a half on these tips. Yeah. Okay. So that is really accurate and even. I'm sure this is intentional. Freeze it right there. He makes a slight turn to the right, to the outside of his turn. And that causes the right sponson to slightly raise. See it come up right there. And then lets off the throttle to settle the boat into the turn. And now the inside or left edge grabs more water. Freeze it right there. The point of showing this again is this part of the turn from here around to here see the water pushing off the right sponson i think having those angles the same from the end of the ride pad all the way to the front will cause the boat to turn the same to the left and to the right Got the bottoms of the sponsons sealed. And the low spots filled. They did several small mixes and brushed it in where it was low. Then I set each sponson up with a sanding block under here so it was level. Let gravity do its thing. Low in this corner through here. And low spot up on that side where I was taking this twist out sanding across this way these needed filled same on this sponson low over in this corner extra fill up on the inside here let this cure for a day or so be ready for final sanding the blueprinting process continues this is my first sanding after leveling it out with the clear and trust me this light Shows everything. Not much more to fill in here. So I'm sanding this and constantly checking it, maintaining my angles all the way down through there. A little bit low on that outside right there because I'm maintaining them angles. So we'll put another coat of clear on here, sand it again. Those sanding marks are a great telltale. Here's a thin coat laid down, filled and flattened. Next, before I do the final sanding, I've built this edge up right here. I want sharp inside corners. That was a little low. I 
I also did another mix. Laid a little bit on this edge here. Level that out some too. My final numbers, blueprinting these sponsons. Looks like I am within two tenths on the entire ride pad area, two tenths of a degree. <clears throat> I'm done sanding. Sixteen and a half in here. Fourteen and a half right in here. These are around eight, eight and a half on the tips. Very accurate. Very done with this. That. Complete cleanup on this last sanding. So that's blueprinting. Best I can do. I have everything level. Sanded to a complete cleanup. Ready for final thin clear coat and paint. And we'll see how this runs, how it behaves in the turn. It's like the video on the F1s. Drop her in the water, settle it, look that turn, got the nice sharp inside edges. Act like a turn fin and this blue printed uh, non trip surface carbon smooth turns both ways back up on the ride pads. Out with Paul in his sights again. It was a beautiful run. The Italian... And I did get the first coat of clear on the Swansons. <clears throat> 